Hello everyone, Rosie the Doodler here. So in today's video, um, I wanted to answer a couple of questions that I've been getting in my comments about um, what I use to make my webcomic like tablet-wise and app-wise. Um, so it's going to be a quick video just kind of going over what I use. I also kind of wanted to go over some of the assets, like maybe one asset from one app that I'm thinking of that has been really helpful. And also maybe some of my line art brushes and my sketching brushes and painting brushes in each of the apps. Um, before we get into it though, I want to give a really big thank you. A really big thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. Um, I know my videos are few and far between, <laughs> but... I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed and who has joined along with my webcomic journey. I do have a little life update at the end. If you want to hear about that, stay tuned until the end. Okay, let's get into it. All right, first and foremost, or just first, I don't know why I said that, so fancy. Um, the tablet I use is an iPad Air 4. It's the green color. I really like green. I don't know if you tell. Here are all the stickers on the back. I'll kind of go over them in a second. I do have an unboxing video. It's a little bit chaotic, so if you're looking for like a chill <laughs> unboxing video, I don't know if that's the one for you, but if you like uh, just crazy, then you can go over and watch the unboxing video anyways um i think this is the 256 gigabyte one there's no way in i'll ever use that much space but it was between this and 64 gigs which 64 might not be that little to but i do have um on top of my webcomic work i do have architecture um like work that I'm doing for college so I did want to have enough space to do both on the same iPad or on just just on my iPad so I wanted to bump it up from the 64 to the 256 so that's the one I got um for my stylus I have the Apple Pencil the uh, second gen Apple Pencil I do have the little nib covers. This one actually wore through the the top of it. I haven't replaced it yet, but I do have little nib covers. And this is just where I keep my chargers and my screen cleaner. Um, and my little glove that I use to uh, draw with. I keep all that in here. Um, these are my nib covers that I got from Amazon. You, you can see them in my unboxing video as well. These are the ones that I haven't used and these are the ones that have ripped <laughs> already or broken. I do use them for drawing like architecture drawings too so when I when I draw for architecture for some reason I really put some pressure on those nibs and they just start tearing. You know what I think it is actually it's because I'm always in a rush to meet a deadline and I just kind of get into it and forget that my nib is not um, rip proof. So yeah, this little pin I have in here is from an artist, um, another the same artist that some of my stickers on my iPad is from. And I'll put the name of the artist right here at the bottom of the screen for y'all. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Oh, and speaking of, I have another little print of of that right here here's the name beautiful art really cute stuff love it if you're looking for some prints or stickers really really nice okay um so the stickers from that artist are this one here and then these little like wildlife creatures that i have in the corners are also from that artist. This big one here is from Lee Alexson, um, who's a really big YouTube artist. I don't know if you guys have seen her videos. Really nice. This one is also from Lee, and this one right here. And then I have some Jujitsu Kaisen stickers also right here. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's the uh, tablet I'm using um, and some of the accessories. So next, let's get into the apps. 
Okay, so first up is Procreate, which is the app I first started out with the first time around. Um, before we get into it, I just wanted to show you some of the architecture drawings I was mentioned earlier. This is my, my midterm boards, just working on those for a while. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> back to the webcomic stuff. Um, I keep all of my webcomic stuff in one folder. I really like Procreate for character designing or like reference sheets. Character reference sheets are really nice to have in Procreate. For Procreate, I found the storyboarding style to be the easiest to work with is where you line them up next to each other and then split them up later on as you go on. If you've been um, on my YouTube channel for a while, you'll know that, that I have restarted a couple of times. And this one I'm showing right now is from a previous attempt at my webcomic that didn't really get past the first episode. Uh, so yeah, that's just kind of what I'm showing here. Uh, just to kind of show how I used to format using Procreate. Um, and yeah, let me just show you the brushes I use um, in Procreate. Uh, so sketching brushes. Personally, I like using the HB pencil for sketching. Um, I like using pencil textures for sketching digitally also. Um, I don't know why, um, but I just really like how it turns out that way. And I have a couple of ones that I like using for inking. First up um, is my technical pen. I love using the technical pen brush. Um, it uh, varies in size with your pressure sensitivity, so you can get really thin lines and then apply more pressure to get some thicker lines. And I think that is really important when choosing a ink, like an inking brush. Line variation, I think, is really important when it comes to line art. Um, so finding a good line art brush with some uh, variations is, I think, really important. So the technical brush is definitely one of my favorites for that specific reason. I think it does really good in line variation. And it does have some stabilization. Is that what it's called? but it like automatically stabilizes your pen for you which is also another factor that is pretty helpful when doing line art the second brush that i like using for um, inking is the studio pen it does get a lot thicker than the technical pen well i guess i didn't really try the size variation on the technical pen but um another thing i use the studio pen for is for flat colors um, so I, I will use a studio pen for, for flat colors if I'm not using the, the fill bucket tool and the select tool. Um, the third inking brush, which is um, I think the last inking brush that I use in Procreate, is the dry ink pen. And this is the textured inking brush. Usually for line art, I don't go with texture um, in my comics. Uh, but when I'm doing like an illustration, a regular illustration, I do sometimes like to use a textured inking brush. And that's when I'll use my dry ink. Another fun one is the Gesinski. <laughs> I have no, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Like actually no, I don't know. Anyways, look, Gesinski. Gesinski. I don't know. You know, you can see it. Um, it's a really cool ink brush it varies the most so you can get really thick and super thin all in the same stroke it's really cool for lettering if you're looking for um a stylized ink brush for your um webcomic icon i think that's the one i used for my icon yeah, there are so many uh, default brushes available in Procreate for different things. So I would definitely recommend checking out all the different ones to see um, what you like. Um, that is Procreate for you. I think I, I go into a little bit more detail about how to use it in some of my other videos, my earlier webcomic videos. Here's a random character that I drew the other day in Procreate that I have not showed anywhere else. So yeah. <laughs> also, oh, I guess I'm going to show one more random drawing that I'm working on. And this is a piece with one of my characters from my comic, Tonjo. He was actually in my Misadventure May this past May. Um, and yeah, I was working on a drawing with him and the uh, merchant um, for my, for my uh, Misadventure May series <laughs> on Instagram. Um, and I haven't drawn his arms in, so I just want to make this little joke, you know? <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoy this. 
Okay, next up is Clip Studio Paint. Um, I have only recently gotten into using this app for comic making, or just in general, gotten into the app. So I'm not familiar with the app as much as I'd like to be at this point. Um, but here is my first attempt at some comic art in here. So far I have loved using Clip Studio Paint. It has a built-in feature where you can make a comic-sized canvas. Um, and uh, I'm just kind of, I've been playing around with how to make one. Um, so you can set the the page preset to um, Webtoon 3, I think, is the one for like Webtoon, just because it is those 800 pixels wide. And then the length, you can kind of decide on your own. And what's cool about Clip Studio Paint is that you can pick a number of pages um, if you want your canvas to have a certain number of pages you can split it up or you can make multiple pages that are your canvas dimensions and navigate it that way and i like using the the second option um, and here is how that looks you can click on your one page and and have your other four to um, kind of click through as you go along working on your comic Another awesome thing about Clip Studio Paint that I have found in like the few weeks that I have had it is having your on-screen area um, for Webtoon available to you so you can see how it looks uh, for people who are reading your Webtoon. So if you set it to that on-screen area, you can see what part of your canvas that people are seeing at once. And that always helps with storyboarding and just layout and everything like that. Um, so opposed to using like the side-by-side -side storyboarding method in Procreate, in Clip Studio Paint, I have actually found it a lot easier to just storyboard in the scroll format just because of the way it's set up as an app and everything. But anyways, into my brushes that I have used, it's literally like the defaults. I haven't, there's like a whole asset library uh, for Clip Studio where you can find free resources to use. So what I've used so far is a mechanical pencil for sketching um, and just like a regular ink pen. I think it's called the G-Pen for inking. Um, and yeah, they're just brushes that come with the program itself. But from the videos I've watched so far and from just exploring around the app a little bit, there are so many things that you can use in this app. Um, like here... If you go into like the little object um, option, there are things like patterns and um, brushes that have buildings on them. So if you're like uh, not really comfortable with drawing every single background or you just want to save some time, there are texture brushes, building brushes, book brushes, like if you're doing bookshelves in the background or something like that. There's just a lot of assets that can help you uh, create comics at a faster rate or a faster pace. There are speech bubbled brushes and like um, movement effect brushes. And there's so much in Clip Studio Paint for comic makers. Um, I think it's a really um, useful app to use if, if that's what you're trying to, um, if you're trying to find an app to use. I definitely recommend it um, if it's within your budget, that is. Another really cool asset that I have found these 3D models in Clip Studio Paint and just in general are really useful for posing and camera angles. So that asset has been one of the one of my favorite ones um, in Clip Studio. It has really helped me to explore how to pose people and how to like move bodies a little bit more. It's not the most dynamic model. Like there's definitely limits to what it can do, just like the human body. Um, but it has definitely been helpful for me to visualize my poses that I have in my head and be able to kind of put them onto a model and use it as a reference for kind of what I want to do. So yeah, um, Clip Studio Paint has been super helpful and I'm really excited to explore it more as I go on. So if you guys want to see me, any videos of me exploring the app itself, um, let me know and I would really love to do that for you. All right, now to just kind of close out the video, I wanted to do a quick little life update to let you know where I'm at 
and how much I have not been working on my comic. As much as that makes me sad. It is like my capstone this semester. So I have been super busy with architecture school. Um, a lot more busy than I had thought at the beginning of the semester. Um, but the best news uh, is that next semester, um, I am moving back home um, for an internship. So the next semester um, in my program calls for an internship. Um, so it's the only thing I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to have classes like on top of it. Um, and so there's going to be a set amount of hours every week that I'll need to be um, interning. Uh, but I'll have a lot more free time next semester to finally sit down and have a consistent work schedule for my comic. And that makes me super excited. Uh, to kind of close out, I want to say a big thank you once again to everyone who has um, subscribed to my channel. I'm so glad you find um, my channel worth subscribing to. It makes me really happy, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.